Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Hit it real light. He just went. That tapeworm. That is a tapeworm. Look at that. That big old mouth, he just came up and went, just barely swirled it. Bye -bye. Someone once said that buzz baits are silly lures. Well, that someone was right. They are. So what? As funny as they look and act, they are one of the most exciting baits to use. Now take this one here. It's called a laser eye buzzmaster. It's made by the good folks at Bass Pro Shop. It weighs three eighths of an ounce. It comes with a pro tie skirt, a premium laser sharp four alt hook, a premium polished aluminum blade that puts out a lot of flash. You know, when you really think about it, it really doesn't look like anything natural, especially in the watery world of a bass. But, as we know, bass are not locked in to only a selective diet. Tell you something else you can do. You want to work that thing slower. You just take your fingers and lay them right here and just kind of roll that blade and cup it a little bit more. Just roll those blades in just a little bit. You can slow that, work that blade a little bit slower. Now, whether you retrieve this bait across the surface, the turning, churning blades gurgle steadily. It's the only lure in the family of topwaters that is constantly on the move, creating a commotion that suggests it's some form of life scurrying for survival. But regardless of how it looks or sounds, or whether bass react to it out of anger, hunger, curiosity, or reflex, they're prone to bust it. You know, I've used a lot of buzz baits, but I really like this one, and let me tell you why. It's far and away better than most of them, and the reason I like it so well is because it's so well balanced. The profile is, is absolutely perfect. I love the sound that it makes, and the blades are so well designed that it allows me to retrieve it as fast as I want to, when I want to, or I can crawl it at a snail's pace across the surface, which I feel can be very, very effective. Uh, that slow presentation we were talking about a little bit earlier can make a major difference. And even when I want to slow it down even more, I can add a plastic attractor to the back hook or the rear hook and one hook on it. And it gives the lure more lift and buoyancy for even a slower presentation. No, it's a great, it's a, it's a good buzz bait, it really is. And by bending those blades in, just curling them a little bit, just rolling them in a little bit, that also gives it a little bit of cup and it'll throw a little bit more water and create a little bit more sound. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, 
catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Nice little fish there. Got him on the outside of the face. Slanky little thing. Need to fatten up, baby. Say bye bye. Let me tell you, there's just something magical about a buzz bait. It'll definitely provoke strikes when all other lures seem to fail. I've seen it time and time again that when bass were very inactive to bite some lures, they'll eat a buzz bait up. There are advantages to fishing a bait of this type. You can cover lots of water with it quickly, and it attracts fish that cannot see your offering. You can fish it over, around, and through many forms of cover that many other lures would be difficult to fish. And finally, buzz baits have a tremendous reputation for attracting large fish. Not to say they don't appeal to smaller fish because they will in a mighty big way. But buzzers seem to have a sound that really turn big fish on. Speaking of exciting lures to use a few minutes ago, I believe the reason this lure is so popular is because it's so highly visible. You can actually see the lure and that keeps you on your toes. The anticipation of knowing that the strike could come at any time can and does make you overreact when you see the water wake up as the fish strikes, making you jerk too quick, snatching the lure away from the fish. We've talked about this lots of times. It's hard to do, but if you pause until you feel the fish, you'll improve your strike-catch ratio tremendously. Try to remember to jerk by feel rather than by sight. Bass are going to miss a high percentage of their strikes, but many will chase and hit repeatedly if the lure isn't jerked away from them. Another specimen. Now, where we're fishing, well, it's not an object situation. With all the cover present and the lure we're fishing, naturally, you would think every cast would be made to a target. But today, that's not the case. Most of our targets are out of sight. It's a contour thing today. By that, I mean the majority of the bass right now are in a depth of about three feet. Well, maybe a little bit deeper, three to four feet. Not up in all that pretty cover where you think they would be. They're out from it a short distance, as I said, in about three to four feet. Now what we're doing, we're following a three foot contour line. We've got a bow mounted trolling motor and the transducer mounted on our trolling motor. And we've got a panoptic unit mounted on it, which is showing almost live video. You can see out 50 to 60 feet in front of the boat and we're fan casting out as we work down the shoreline. 
We're seeing a lot of these fish before we even get to them. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. And Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's show is sponsored in part by Strin, the standard of dependability since 1958. Lurlock, turning the tackle world upside down. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. It out that far, he better swallow it. There he is. Way out there. Yep. How you doing? Let me tell you about one of the best presentations I've found with this lure. Many fishermen have the tendency to work the lure too fast. The more you want to catch the bass, oftentimes the faster you fish the bait. This rapid race across the surface may work on some occasions, but more than often, bass prefer a slow pace. The slowest that a buzz bait will run and still stay on the surface is ideal. The slow rate can be best obtained by using the bait with some type of an attractor underneath and keeping your rod tip at about the 10 o'clock position. Do I always use an attractor? No, but many times when I really want to slow the bait down, I'll add a plastic frog junk or some type of a plastic attractor under it. What this does, it gives the bait lift and it allows me to work it extremely slow. Wow, baby. And then toughy too. Oh yeah, here's another good. Oh, another nice fish. Get me up out of my chair. Look at the size of that. Oh yeah, he is a dandy. I have to get down here. Get my hands right there. Woo, look how fat that fish is. Man. That's it. Hear it? Let me look at you and I'm gonna turn you loose. Big old fat one. Okay, let's go home. See ya. See it come up right there. And what I'll do is just take it right back out.
probably see fish with an optics. Scan down that three foot ledge. See if we see anything out there. Look in toward the bank. We'll pan back down the ledge. The three foot contour and then go back out. Don't we'll see anything out to 100 feet. He's back in. There's a fish right there. Moving up on him. He's five feet in front of the boat. Takes him to go under the boat. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. How often do you oil your reels? Reels tend to be one of the most neglected items of your tackle. They should be well cared for. Now I try to clean and oil my reels every month with a quality lightweight oil. One drop on the bearings and other moving parts is plenty. The key is to apply it at regular intervals. Don't add clean oil to dirty oil. That will only compound the problem. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by PowerPole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter, sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. I'll never forget one of the many things my grandfather taught me about fishing, and that was being quiet. Maybe he wanted me to hush up so he could concentrate. <laughs> now seriously, many times it pays off. And that's why I like this little four-stroke motor so doggone much. It allows me to idle back through this shallow cover without even spooking a minnow. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Oh my gosh, look here. That's a good one. That's nice. Trying to show out. Boy, he knocked the living buzz out of it. He's up here. Oh, going it. Easy now. Gotcha. Oh, toes is a good one. Oh, flashing buzz. Isn't that a pretty one? Yep, that's a pretty one. Okay, baby, time to go home. What is it about a buzz bait that catches fish? Well, I believe it's a sound. That's a key factor in attracting fish. Some attract more fish than others, and I believe there's reasons for it. Is that some produce a positive sound versus a negative one? Like I said earlier, this one here, it produces a positive sound. That's pretty obvious by the number of fish that I've caught today. It's, like I say, it's a mighty good one. A mighty good one. It's amazing to me just how far a fish can hear sound. But when you think about it, it's really not that hard to understand. 
Water is a much better conductor of sound than air. Sound travels only 1,087 feet per second in the air, but it zips at 4,800 feet per second in water, and thousands of times more effectively. 4,800 feet per second? Hey, that's almost a mile. No wonder fish can hear so well. Besides a buzz bait having good sound, every bass lure, if it's to catch fish, must have other features. To attract a bass's attention, some of these would be, let's say, size, uh, you gotta consider color, shape, action, and, as I said earlier, slow movement on the surface. That's important. You don't wanna have to just reel the fire out of this bait to keep it up. That's important. Fair one. Barely hit it. Oh, nice fish. Oh, buddy, I gotta get you before you get in those pads. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. That's a pretty one. Woo! Nice, healthy. Some of them are just as healthy as they can be. Here we go. I'm gonna lay you on that pad. There he goes, like he knows where he's going. You know, catching a bass on the surface is a mighty special way of fishing. When you can trick a surface feeder into striking, well, you've experienced one of the greatest thrills in angling, especially with a lure that looks and acts so doggone silly. It's without question, simply tops. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.